Hi, everybody. Luke Thomas here with some semi-breaking news about John Jones and an alleged incident he was involved in. So the news initially came to us from an outlet called ABQ Raw. I'm going to show you everything that is worth, I think, taking a look at, both the initial report that came out, uh, some updated reporting from TSN's Aaron Bronstetter, and then a response from John Jones himself. So let's go right to the source material and show you guys what the situation is here. I'm going to pull this in if I can, just like this. All right. So you can see it here. UFC star John Jones threatens to kill drug tester. APD responds. So what's the situation here? Remember, the UFC no longer works with USADA, the United States Anti-Doping Agency. They now work with Drug Free Sport International. So it's a new set of test collectors. It's a new set of people to get familiar with. It's just a it's the same kind of process, although it looks like fewer tests if you're actually looking at um, compared to what this time last year USADA had turned in, but different story altogether. Nevertheless, someone showed up at John Jones's place to collect both a blood and urine sample, and according to ABQ Raw, they were threatened. Let's go through the story here so we can get a better assessment of things. All right, there he is, the man himself who has been in any number of different problems the Lord just seems to want to keep testing him, I suppose. Okay, here we go. The Albuquerque Police Department responded to a call after a person working for a drug testing agency, that would be the Drug Free Sport International, uh, was trying to obtain a drug test from UFC fighter John Jones. The UFC partners, of course, blah, 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 there you go. And it is in charge of the collection process. For several years, the UFC partnered with USADA. Okay, doesn't matter. This is the part that does. Sources who are not authorized to speak to the media said the drug tester noticed Jones appeared extremely intoxicated and threatened to kill the tester. Jones at one point even snagged the drug tester's cell phone. The incident happened at the end of March. We'll get to some of these details here in a moment. However, the tester went to a location nearby Jones' home today to report the incident. A court record uh, search did not produce any criminal summons or charges related to this incident as of today. The tester met with officers at another location in far northeast Albuquerque. APD is currently investigating uh, the alleged criminal act. Okay, so that is the basic story as such. A tester, you'll find out there's actually two of them, but a tester shows up to John Jones's place to collect a sample, and he appears to threaten them. He appears to be intoxicated. That is the, excuse me, those are the allegations as we understand them in this new story. But there's more that comes to us, as I mentioned, from TSN's Aaron Bronstetter. So let me show you this, if I can, this tweet here that he has, just like this. You're not going to be able to read it, so but don't worry. I will read this to you. I know that it's hard to see. And Aaron writes, a summons will be issued to Jones on accusations of assault and interference with communications per the incident report. Below is an excerpt of the report provided by Officer Gilbert Gallego of the Albuquerque Police Department. Let me read this to you if this is in any way um, uh, illegible. Okay, very quickly. Here is what this officer writes, quote, upon arrival, I contacted Crystal, who stated she worked for, of course, Drug Free Sport International, blah, blah, blah. She stated, and a co-worker identified as Jerome, they arrived at Jones's residence on the 30th, 30th of March at approximately 1,600 hours. Folks, been in the, was in the military for a long time, well, a long time, but long enough to know that's 4 p.m. I saw some folks out there saying it's 4 a.m. No, it is not. That is 4 p.m. Back to the story. Uh, an unknown male answered the door. Crystal stated there had uh, th stated there she contacted Jones to inform him there uh, to conduct a drug test, showed him her credentials, and he was cooperative at first. Crystal told me she laid down the equipment on a table, including her phone. She also informed me that Jones wanted to do the urine test in the garage, so she went around the corner while Jerome stood with Jones. Obviously, they have to monitor him. Crystal stated she waited a few minutes and then went back because she uh, did not hear anything and they were gone. She said that Jerome and Jones came through a door and that Jerome appeared nervous and said Jones couldn't pee. Crystal explained to me she offered to do a blood test instead and Jones appeared agitated by him being, quote, tense and puffed up, end quote, and looked bugged. They're using slang now, like bugged out. Crystal stated that Jones was asking them questions if they had money because he was going to sue them. Crystal also stated that Jones picked up her phone and started recording them, saying he was going to sue them, which she had video of. It should be noted at the time Jones had no shirt, and then he says he's big. Uh, I looked at the video, the officer says, and it appeared Jones stated something to the effect of, here, Jerome and his girlfriend in my garage, and then the video cut off. Crystal stated that after that, Jones made the statements about suing them and put her phone in his pocket. She told me she asked for the phone back, and he refused, 
and got into her face stating, why, uh, why do you people basically come here so early? Do you know what happens to people who come to my house? They end up dead, end quote. Crystal said she felt afraid, her heart was pounding, and was terrified at the moment, and Jones was less than a foot away. She explained she wanted to terminate the test uh, and, there, and wanted to, but was afraid uh, Jones might hit her since the UFC finds athletes if the test is not taken. Crystal stated that she tried to signal to Jerome. Basically, it goes on to say that she tried to signal to her partner, like, let's leave, but it didn't work. Lastly... She stated that Jones later agreed to take the urine test again and placed her phone back on the counter, so she grabbed it while he and Jerome went to the patio. Crystal stated that uh, when she texted her boss, only known as Pearson, Jones was threatening her and that she could not talk to him over the phone right now because Jones could come back at any moment and thought Jones would attack her if he saw her on the phone. Crystal told me that Jones, excuse me, Jerome and Jones had come back and that Jerome looked pale and nervous. Crystal stated Jerome started to package and seal the urine so they could get out of there, but he kept making mistakes, which she believed was because he was nervous. Great. So now, in addition to the story, you're going to have a potentially contaminated uh, sample taken, which is, you know, I realize not on the top of everyone's mind, but it does come up now. Okay. Uh, moving on from that, she believed Jones might have been drunk because she smelled an odor of an alcoholic beverage coming from him. Crystal said once they left, she did an internal report for her boss, but also informed him she was going to file a police report, and he told her to hold off until UFC representatives spoke with her and that Jerome told her he did not want to file one because he was afraid of the repercussions. Awesome. Crystal stated later that Pearson contacted her on Tuesday, that would be the 4th of April, asking her why she wanted to file a report and seemed like he was trying to talk her out of it. Crystal said she tried to file a, a report a few days ago, but was waiting for hours so she could call back. They go on and on from there, but you get the idea. So two people showed up, a male and a female, to John Jones's residence at what they say is 4 p.m. Let's be very clear. These are allegations inside of a write-up and a police report. There are no... Uh, again, there's going to be a summons issued to him with accusations, but to my knowledge, he has not been formally charged just yet. In any case, we should treat them as allegations. That's what they are. This is her side of the story. But from this side of the story, Jones was drunk at 4 p.m. They show up to collect a sample. He's belligerent, uncooperative, unable to provide a sample, whatever version of the various different things you heard there. One, because he was making mistakes with the sample seal, I wonder if the sample is even any good. That's kind of interesting. Um, two on top of it, she felt threatened. So remember, you'll recall that I think in September of 2022, there was an incident. This is of course the weekend where he was inducted into the UFC hall of fame at age 34 or so for the Gustafson fight. He bangs his head on the uh, hood of a cop car. He gets arrested for it. He got charged for some issue there as well as I think there was uh, a domestic violence charge, which was, was eventually dismissed, but there was this disturbing report that came from his, I think, then fiance, um, that he, Jones, had allegedly put hands on her and that she was observed by others to have blood on her face. Again, you can make of that what you want as well, but it's sort of part of a broader story here, both with John getting into trouble with either anti-doping or law enforcement authorities or the nexus and connection between them, and also, on top of that, issues related to now um, physical threats to others. In this particular case, uh, women, either in a personal or a professional role. I want to be clear one more time. Anything related to what has come out today are allegations. But nevertheless, there is at least a troubling amount of connectivity, whether they're allegations proven or not, uh, between this story and previous incidents that John has gotten into. Also, you'll recall, remember, it was right during the pandemic that he was observed, or I, I believe to have been firing off shots in a sort of uh, quiet downtown Albuquerque, and then there was a bottle of Recuerdo in his car. He was observed to have had uh, you know, be under the influence at that time. And most of those charges ultimately ended up doing nothing as well for a variety of different reasons. But again, you have drug use alleged here in this particular case, but that has been demonstrated in his past physical threatening of women. Again, it is alleged in this case, but there is a connectivity to his past running into anti-doping authorities. Again, it is alleged of some of these details, but nevertheless, um, there's a connectivity to his past, and now law enforcement, including the uh, Albuquerque Police Department, being involved, there is connectivity to his past. We don't know what happened. The, again, one more time, these are all allegations, but they don't sound out of character, do they?
They sound perfectly within character. Now, John has responded. It does. It is worth hearing his side of the story. So let's take a look at what he has to say here. I'll show it to you now. So he, there's a video he put out, and I'll and here, just take a look. You can see these are the testers. He put this up on Instagram, and he high fives. I'm I'm guessing that's Crystal, and I'm guessing that's Jerome. I don't know. They're not identified as such. Perhaps they're two different people. One more time, we'll play that, and you can see they come by his house. Watch, he's going to show oh, here. One more time, they come out. You can see him here, and I think the woman will reach for a high five. Yeah, and he kind of like lightly touches her up there. But here's what he says. I want to address reports about me allegedly threatening a drug tester's life and taking a phone. I want to clarify, there is a video showing both the drug testers leaving my home after the testing session where we exchanged a high five and a hug. Although I was frustrated with the unprofessionalism and used profanity out of frustration, it ended friendly and amicably. Nothing threatening at all. I was actually celebrating a friend's birthday party at my home, and I believe it's perfectly normal to celebrate in the comfort of my own home. I must say this particular tester behaved quite unprofessionally and even breached standard protocol along with HIPAA laws. Which ones? I mean, what does that even mean? People don't even know what that means. Does that mean she released to the public test results? Like, in what ways did she violate a HIPAA law? I mean, she might have done something you found, or that Jones, I should say, found, uh, either professionally questionable or medically murky in some kind of way, or just some kind of way thing you didn't like related to how she does her job. But what is the law that got violated there? I, I don't, I don't understand what that means. Anyway, just finishing off what he says. Throughout my 20 years of being subjected to drug tests, I have never encountered such an incident with a DCO officer. He's talking about, of course, the people who do the collection samples. There you go. That's his side. Of the story. Now, there's another element to this story, which is let's go back to it. She says, Crystal, according to this report from this police officer in Albuquerque, she wanted to call or report anyway this to the law enforcement authorities. And her partner there, Jerome, did not. And even her boss, apparently, or a co worker at a bare minimum, wanted to talk her out of it. <laughs> right. So we should sort of note like there is a weird conflict of interest that appears to be happening now that the UFC has moved this anti-doping program in house, where if testers end up in a situation where they feel like law enforcement should be involved, they're having to, according to this report. And again, we haven't heard the UFC side of the story either, but at least according to this report, she felt pressured not to, uh, in order to speak to them first for what purposes, I don't know like what, why would the UFC need to talk to someone who felt like they were physically threatened and wanted law enforcement involved. That's her, that's her right and her choice, no matter what. So there actually is a conversation to be had about what this means for the UFC's anti-doping program, how much one can trust it, how thorough it is. We already mentioned they're doing less testing than USADA. And I would say normally that's going to be a situation that I care a lot about, but I have to tell you the fighters have made it very, very clear. They are not interested in meaningfully improving the conditions under which they work. And so I don't really... Now that this program has moved in-house, there is no third party involved. There's really no way to scrutinize this. I don't suspect anything is going to happen to the UFC's program as a result of some of these issues. I don't even know what's going to happen with this person, Crystal or Jerome, and whether or not their employment will continue. I don't really know how that's going to work. What I can say with great confidence is this will do nothing to in any way challenge the UFC's power or control over this matter. Uh, any kind of media about it is going to be a bad look for John, but I don't think it's going to make anybody really do anything about the, the what appears to be very, at a bare minimum, questionable conflict of interest involved in the anti-doping program. And in fact, I brought it up on Twitter and people made it everything about, uh, about it. People made it about every issue other than that. And that's the one that kind of screams out to me right away. It's like, wow, the testers feel like they have to confer with UFC authorities. And again, we don't know if the UFC is making them do that or these are people who are choosing to do that of their own volition. But according to this report, these testing officers feel like they have to confer with UFC when they have scary or otherwise questionable engagements with their athletes. It actually should not be happening at all, but it's because it's in house and she went, again, Crystal went it to law enforcement authorities anyway. So lots of questions there, but I have to tell you, 
the fighters, again, I'll say it one more time, they have made it very clear they are not interested in changing or improving the material conditions under which they operate. And so I think we should take them at their word at this point and take them, um, we should really honor their requests, I feel like, and just not care about that kind of thing anymore. But there is certainly, not on that issue, we cannot care about it. On the issue with John Jones, I, you know, listen, I'll end on this. I've said this for a long time, and I don't think it really changes here. This guy needs help. He needs help. Um, there's nothing wrong with partying. There's nothing wrong with partying even at 4 p.m. If you were, I would imagine that having a doping controlling officer showing up to your house is really not ideal. I understand that. Um, and again, this is his side of the story. There's a lot of pieces of information that are missing here that could be very exonerating towards John and really back up his response or not, or it could make him look even worse. What I can say is what I said earlier. Every layer of this story, while currently alleged, at least matches something from his past that we know did occur. And for that reason, I, don't, I just don't believe that, um, personally speaking, there is a lot of mercy that Jones is owed here. We, we, we should be clear. We don't know all the facts. That's true. We don't know them. And for that reason, we should have at least some pause to let the process play out. But it appears, appears to be another ugly chapter in his career. Let's see what happens from here.